In today's video we will see instrumentation interview questions and answers. The first question is, what are the two main parts of a control valve? Although there are many parts in your control valve, but only two parts are main. The first of the two main parts of a control valve is actuator or what we also call pneumatic actuator and the second part is valve body or what we also call body. So see from here, you have seen the control valve in this image. In this, we have shown a rectangle. The actuator has been shown from the upper rectangle. The actuator serves to operate the control valve. It plays the most important role in operating the control valve. And one rectangle is shown below. It is called body or valve body. The flow of fluid passes through the body. Now let us understand the ball valve. As seen in the previous valve, likewise, look at this valve. What is shown by the circle is the valve body, through which the fluid flow will pass. And, shown with the arrow above, is the actuator, which will operate the valve. Let's take the second question, how the control valve body and actuator are connected to each other? You must know the answer to this question. It will also help you a lot in your field work. The control valve is shown in the right image and one control valve is shown in the left image. Now understand the actuator and the body. The circles shown to you in the image and in the left image are the parts that connect the actuator and the body. The part which connects the actuator and the body of the control valve is called coupling. Coupling means to couple. Coupling is also understood more closely. In the left image you can see the half coupling with the arrow. And full coupling is shown in the right image by the circle. Now let's see the next question. How is the control valve connected to the valve positioner? Let us understand the answer. The valve positioner is shown here. In the left image, and, in the right image, the positioner shown in the left image is said to a pneumatic positioner. The positioner in the right image is an electro-pneumatic positioner. As shown in the circle, the positioner is connected to the control valve from this part. Now let's see the name of this part. What is the name? Its name is, lever. So, if you are asked the question. Which part is used to connect the control valve to the positioner? The answer would be, lever. Now let's see the next question. What is a normally open control valve and a normally closed control valve? A normally open control valve is one that is normally open in normal condition. Let us understand what is the normal condition for a control valve. Normal condition for a control valve means the absence of air. When the air signal is not applied, so, the valve that remains open in the absence of air. That is called a normally open control valve. Friends, normally open control valve is also called air to closed control valve. Now let's understand why it is called air to closed control valve. Here in the image you can see a normally open or air to closed control valve. Here the air signal is applied above to the control valve diaphragm. See from here, I have tried to understand with the help of arrows. Air signal will be applied from here. When an air signal is applied over the diaphragm, the control valve starts closing on the air apply. That's why it is called air to closed control valve. And in the absence of air, this valve remains open, hence it is called a normally open control valve. A normally closed control valve is one that is closed in normal condition. This means, the valves that remain closed, when the air signal is not applied, are said. A normally closed control valve. Normally closed control valve is also called air to open control valve. Now let's take the next question of today's video. In this question, you have to tell the parts of control valve, tell their name. Its parts are, actuator, wheel, coupling, packing set, cage, plug, body, 
valve stem, actuator stem. Now let's see. What are active and passive components in instrumentation? You must know about this. Active components can amplify and process the signal output. But they can do so only with the help of passive components. Let us try to understand this with the help of an example. Let us take the example of students and school bags. Student can study. But he cannot study without pen, bag, notebook. Here, the student is an active component as he can work by himself. Bag, notebook, pen are all passive elements. Without these the student cannot study. You can also say this that these things like bag, notebook, pen cannot be studied on their own. But can help the students by which they can study. So, from here one can conclude that the passive components help active components in the amplification and further process of the signal. Let's understand something else about active and passive components. Devices or components that require an external source to operate are called active components. Means AC or DC supply is required for active components. Here, we can also say equipment or components that produce energy in the form of voltage or current are called active components. If we understand their example in electronics then they are diode, transistor. And if you understand the examples of this in instrumentation, they are transmitter, controller. Now because transmitter and controller are active components, so they will need an external supply source to operate. Means, DC supply or AC supply will be required, usually 24 volts DC supply is provided for the transmitter. And usually 220 volts AC supply is given for the controller. These transmitters, flow meters, controllers are active components. Other examples are, all kinds of flow meters, transmitters, controllers are active components. But, devices or components that do not require an external supply source to operate are called passive components. This means that AC or DC supply is not given to passive components. And, devices or components that store energy in the form of voltage or current are called passive components or devices. If we understand their examples from electronics, then they are Resistor, Capacitor, Inductor And if we understand examples of this in instrumentation, they can be RTD, Thermocouple, Pressure Gauge Temperature gauge, ammeter, voltmeter. RTD, thermocouple, pressure gauge, temperature gauge these do not require any power supply to operate. Many people have a doubt whether RTD and thermocouple are active devices or passive devices. Let's understand this guys. RTD and thermocouple are passive devices. The output of the RTD is resistance, and, the output of thermocouple is in volts or in millivolts. And, they do not require power supply. After installation in the field, they give their output. I think you must have got cleared. Let's look at more examples of passive devices. Resistors, LDR, thermistors, capacitors, inductors, switches. For example, pressure switch limit switch, level switch, and variable resistor. Active components can control the flow of current, but the passive components cannot control the flow of current. This is also a main difference between them. Like transmitter, controller all these can control the flow of current. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, don't forget to subscribe it. Active components are complex in design and cost more. Whereas,
Passive components are simpler in design, and they cost less.